Welcome back to the commonly used Excel charts and functions video series. Today in lesson 29, we will cover some functions for text processing. Here I have some customer info for a restaurant, and we are going to use this table to practice some text related functions. The first will be the left function, which we will use to pull each customer's area code. Now we'll use the left function here. And the first argument is text, which will be the customer's phone number. Now the second argument, number of characters, is in brackets, which means it's optional. So let's just ignore it for now. So you can see the function has returned a 4, which is the first digit from the left of the first customer's phone number. However, we want the area code, which is the first three digits from the left of each customer's phone number. So let's change that optional a number of characters argument to a three to see if that gives us the full area code. And it does, so let's drag the formula down the rest of the column here. Now for the right function, we will use this to pull the customer's pickup code. When a customer places an order, their pickup code becomes the last four digits of their phone number. So we'll start by typing in the right function. Again, the text argument will be the customer's phone number and the number of characters argument this time will be four, since we want the last four digits of the customer's phone number from the right. So we'll specify four, press enter, and then we'll drag this formula down the rest of the column. Now let's move on to three more text functions, starting with upper. And upper converts all characters in a cell into uppercase. And I'm going to use my first name column here to demonstrate that. By dragging down the rest of the formula, you can see that all the first names are now in all uppercase. Now the lower function does the same thing, but it converts all characters in a cell into lowercase. I'm going to use the last name column this time, and you can see by dragging down the rest of the formula that all the last names are in lowercase. Now the proper function converts the first letter of each word in a cell into uppercase. So I'm going to use the first name column again to demonstrate the proper function. And when we drag down, you can see that each first name starts with a capital and ends in a lowercase. Now I'm actually going to type out a quick sentence down here so that we can better demonstrate the proper function. And I'm just going to drag it down, my formula down a bit more here. And you can see by doing that, the proper function converted each letter of a new word in this easy quick sentence to a capital. Now sometimes we want to combine content from two or more cells into one cell, like combining a first, middle name, and last name cell into a full name cell. Two functions can do this and we'll start with text join. Now the first argument in this function is called delimiter, which is the separator that you want to put between the content from each different cells. We want a space in between each first, middle, and last name, so we'll specify our delimiter as a space. To do this, we'll do a quotation mark, a space, and then a quotation mark. The second argument is ignore empty, which means that you can ignore the cell if the content is empty. We'll choose true, but I'll just type a 1 because 1 always equals true. Now the rest of the arguments are the cells that you want to add, and you can actually specify quite a few but in our case, we are only going to do the first name, middle name, and last name. When we drag down the formula here, you can see that all the first, middle names, and last names have been combined. Now, Concat does the exact same thing, but it's a bit more tedious, and this is because we have to manually enter all of those spaces that we want between the first, middle, and last name. So we'll do the first name cell, and then we'll have to specify a space by going quotation mark, space, quotation mark, the middle name cell, and then we'll have to specify a space after that. And then finally, we can choose the last name cell. Then by dragging down there, you can see that each column looks exactly the same, but text join, you only have to specify that space once in the beginning, which is why I prefer to use text join. All right, the final function we'll cover today is len, and here we have a table with some phone numbers, some have area codes, and some don't. This is because several years ago, this city only had one area code, which was 204. But later on, with an increasing population, it had to add another area code, which is 431. Now, if we want to extract the area code from each of these phone numbers, how would we do so? 
Well, we can assume that if the phone number has more than eight characters, then we'll take the left three most digits. So that would be the case for these first two phone numbers and these last two phone numbers here. Then we can also assume that if the phone number has eight digits, then the area code will be that original 204 area code. So that will be the case for these three middle phone numbers here. So let's use the len function to find out how many characters each of the phone numbers are. And then we'll use a left and an if function combined to pull the actual area code. So I'll start with the if function and our logical test will be that if the length of the phone number is equal to eight, the value of true will be that the area code is equal to 204. If that is false, then we want to take the left three most digits of the phone number. So we'll specify phone number for the text argument and three for the number of characters argument. We'll have to do a double closing bracket. And then when we drag the formula down, it fills in all the correct area codes. And that concludes our lesson for today, where we learned multiple different text related functions. Thank you for watching, and we'll see you in the next lesson.